science, making healthier choices, advancing his way through all his life problems, okay? This man is gonna inspire you tonight, and he can get you out of your comfort zone, and he can make you wanna change your life for the better. Ladies and gentlemen, John Clear. Yes, I am. <laughs> Go Steelers, by the way. So, um, so good. We're doing great. We did a little dancing just now, right? We had a lot of inform informative information from the doctor, right? I'm just a truck driver, so I'm not going to act like a doctor. What I'm going to do is tell you my story, how I lost weight, how I've gained weight, how I, how I persevered, right? We're going to talk about life. We're going to talk about loss. We're going to talk about never giving up. That's what we're going to talk about right now. How many of you in here like to dance? <laughs> okay, awesome. Let me ask you this. How many of you have gained, lost weight and gained it back? And maybe lost it and gained it back again? Okay, okay. So I'm not alone. So this is going to start out... Um, Back in 2007, I've been a truck driver since 2002, uh, full time on the road, 60 hour plus a week, right? Um, but I always made an excuse as a truck driver. I know we have a fellow truck driver in the room here. I was introduced to him earlier. Thank you. So I always made excuses. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I need help. Someone help me. I was looking for help. I didn't believe that I could do it myself. I didn't have faith. But my cousin passed away of bone cancer. He was 37 years old. We were the same age. And God took him to be home with him. And that hit me. For the first time ever, I decided I have to lose weight. I was pushing 400 pounds back in 2007. And there's no more excuses. So I dedicated myself to weight loss. Seeing his children at the front of his casket was enough for me to change my life around. So I lost 50 pounds in 2007. And guess what happened after that, after I lost the weight? I gained the weight back. So it happens. We lose weight, we gain weight, life is life, there's obstacles, life gets in the way, we have excuses. We have lots and lots of excuses why we can't lose weight. So let's fast forward a little bit to 2011. And by the way, in 2010, I had a friend, Big Dave, they called him, a fellow truck driver. He also passed away. And let me say, from complications of diabetes. He was a very obese man. And the me and him had a lot in common. We we're both big guys. And, and that's another loss of mine that I felt that hit home. You know, it's just so sad. I was, I was so upset over his loss, 52 years old. So, um, so fast forward to 2011, um, I decided let's do this again. You know, biggest loser contest in Cincinnati. Let me be part of this. Let me see if I can do it again. So I joined a gym, I got a gym membership, and guess what I found in 2011? Zumba. <laughs> huh? A big, tall, intimidating looking dude, stepping into a Zumba room, 99% women. How do you think that went down? Huh? But I, I, I fit in pretty quickly. Um, I, I think I, I showed them that I was not only there to look at them, but, but to join them, right? Uh, because I've always been a dancer since I was a young child, 13, 14, 15 years old. I've always danced. I grew up in poverty most of my life, and dancing kept me out of trouble, to be honest with you, in music. So dancing has always been there. So fast forward to 2011, 
I get focused, I find Zumba, I'm passionate about my exercise now. This is fun. This is exercise in disguise. Like, this isn't, really? I'm upstairs on the treadmill, like, you know, I've been on there for 40 minutes and it feels like four hours. And I hear music downstairs. What's this? Oh, this is good music. This is music I like. Let me go down there. I pop my head in the room, they're dancing, sweating. This is called Zumba. I was introduced to Zumba in 2011. So just let me say, from committing, being determined with a no excuses attitude now, right? We're not, we're not making excuses no more. Now there's no excuses. I'm going to step in this room, even though I'm intimidated, I don't feel comfortable. I'm going to step out of my comfort zone. That's when we grow. That's when we push forward. That's when we make great strides in life. Not only weight loss, but becoming who we want to be in life. To be fulfilled, to, to, to just feel the empowerment of living. So I stepped in that Zuma room, even though I really didn't want to, but I felt like I had to. So I did it, and I lost 100 pounds in 2011. By being committed as a truck driver. I still drove a truck. I was still a truck driver. I still had a family. I still had responsibility. I was still busy. I was busier in 2011 than I was in 2007. But it was up here. My mind, my, my, my mentality <coughs> changed. You see, as far as I'm concerned, I can stand up here and tell you A, B, C, D, all the way through Z, what you need to do, sir, to lose weight, to eat what uh, nuts, make sure you get the right vitamin D. You gotta wanna do it. You gotta say I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. If you're not there, then I, I could be the smartest man on the planet telling you exactly what to do and you ain't gonna do it. You have to be ready. In 2011, I was ready to lose 100 pounds with a no excuses attitude, driving a truck. I was ready, and I did it, and I accomplished it without spending a lot of money on surgery, and surgery is good for certain people. I'm afraid to go under the knife, I'm sorry. I'm scared. So I did it the old fashioned way, blood, sweat, and tear. But that's how we can do anything in life, right? Ain't that how we accomplish anything? By hard work? Is that how we feel good about ourselves? It's not by taking a pill. It's not by taking the easy way out. Let's work for it. And at the end, we're empowered. Look who I am. Look who I am. Look, look at me. I'm a truck driver trying to inspire people to be better people and to do more and to encourage people, to let people know I'm no different than anyone in this room. No different. I promise you, everyone in here is good enough to lose weight, to accomplish your goals and dreams, anything you want to accomplish. Last year, 2015, was the worst year of my life. The worst. I've been on this earth for almost 47 years, and 2015 was the worst year of my life. In April of 2015, I was on a dancing truck driver tour. I was going to truck stop to truck stop, pilot, flying J, TA, you name it. I was going there, and I was dancing in front of the truck drivers. Huh? Yeah? Talk about stepping out of your comfort zone, right? And maybe I'm a little delusional, people, but I thought a truck driver was going to join me. I really did. And it never did happen. But I enjoyed myself. <laughs> I was having fun. And not for one second did I not look around that parking lot and PA and pilot and see truck drivers sitting there on their 10 hour break with nothing else to do. But eat. And maybe eating, yeah. or smoking, or chewing, or doing something, right? And they could have been out with me dancing. But people are afraid. People are afraid of what other people think. 
Life's too short to worry about what someone thinks of you. Isn't that right? Do you feel something down deep in your soul, in your heart, and you want to do it? You do it. You do it. So in 2015, in April, I'm on the truck driver dancing tour. I come home on April the 15th, 2015, on a Sunday. My sister calls me and tells me my mother was killed by a drunk driver. on her way to church. <clears throat> this drunk driver took my mother from me. I didn't say to get to say goodbye. She's in heaven now, and I'm sure she's very proud of what I'm doing today. But can I use that as an excuse to give up? Can I use that as an excuse to give up? Would people blame me? I don't blame you, John. Well, I got killed by a drunk driver. You can gain weight if you want. You can lose focus. Three months after that, in the end of July, my whole house was burnt down to the ground. I almost lost everything. I lost my pets, but I almost lost everything. Three months later, my son set, set the house to fire cooking at 3 o'clock in the morning. My 21-year-old son. And we barely made it out alive. My closet, if my bedroom door would have been open, we would have deceived and ceased. Me and my wife and my two sons would have been gone, but it was closed. The house is that engulfed in flames and fire and smoke when I woke up. I believe my mother woke me up that morning. So is that an excuse? Is that an excuse why I can gain weight and give up? Can people look at me then? And say, John, mother was killed by a truck driver. You lost everything. You experienced hell, living hell in that fire. Go ahead, man. Let yourself go. Give up. Live life. Eat what you want. Have fun. Quit dancing. No. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep dancing. I will keep inspiring you and encouraging you and giving you hope. That's what I'm going to do. Nothing's going to stop me. Nothing's going to get my way. Nothing. I'm never standing up there right now. I've never done this public speaking engagement in my life, ever. And Teresa reached out to me through Facebook. Four years ago, she reached out to me. And I just found her message last year. I just found her message last year, the worst year of my life. And she made this happen tonight. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. So let's talk about more of the specific stuff that we can control, right, when it comes to weight loss.